For this project, you're going to need two colors. Uh, this is washed white yarn, 100 gram skeins. We will be using most of the skeins. You need two colors. Um, this is washed white yarn, four ply for the U.S. and 10 ply for Australia. You're also going to be needing a 4.5 millimeter hook or size G hook. Now I'll be showing you how to make the puff flower. First, you want to chain four. Then you want to slip stitch in the beginning chain to form a ring. Then chain one. And then you want to work 12 single crochets in this ring that you just made. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Once you've got your twelve, and you want to cut your yarn, leaving just a little bit of yarn left. Then grab your other color that you're using. And this is just for this hat, the way I'm doing this hat. You can uh, stay with one flower, I mean, you can stay with one color for the whole flower if you like. But if you're going to change colors like I am, then you want to go into the first stitch where you would normally slip stitch into. But this time, grab your new color and use it to slip stitch through the stitch and then through the loop. And you can pull the original yarn tight. Then with the new color, chain three. One, two, three. Now yarn over, go into that same stitch that you just slip stitched into. And I'm getting my tails and putting them on the top of my hook because I'm going to work over my tails. What you want to do is pull up, yarn over, go into the same stitch, and again, pull up into the same stitch and pull up. You do that three times in one stitch. Then yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop and pull up, yarn over, go into that same stitch again, yarn over, pull up. Again, for the third time, you want to yarn over, pull up a loop and pull up. So you have, you've done that three times in this stitch, three times in this stitch. You should have a total of 13 loops. You want to yarn over, pull through all 13 loops. Then chain three. Then you want to slip stitch into this stitch. The, the same stitch you did the second part of the puff stitch in. So put your hook in there. And slip stitch. Now you want to slip stitch into the next stitch as well, which is going to bring you over to where you're going to start your next petal. So now that you're in the new stitch here, you want to chain three and go into that same stitch, pull up a loop, that's one, do it again, that's two, do it again, and that's three. Then you go into the next stitch. I'm still working over my tails here. So that's this is one, two, and three. I'm using my yarn here. And three. Then you want to pull through all your loops. Again, chain three. Go into the same stitch where you did your second part of your puff and do a slip stitch. Then in the next stitch, do a slip stitch, which brings you again back to your petal where you chain three. Then repeat by going into that same stitch. One, two, three. Yarn over, go into the next stitch. One, two, three, 
we'll do all your loops and chain three and then slip stitch back into that stitch and then slip stitch to the next you want to continue this for the whole flower until you have six petals okay when you get to your last petal you do your chain three again you want to slip stitch into that same place and then go ahead and slip stitch like you normally would into the next stitch then you want to chain one leaving yourself just a little bit of tail so that you can work it in with the tapestry needle and pull your string now you want to make another one but with a brown center and with white petals you're going to be alternating and I'll show you how to connect so go ahead and start making brown center white petals and after you get your center done I'll meet you back here now I'm at the point I'm at my flower petal and like I did before exchange to your other color then chain three then you start working your petal again as normal now I want you to make all your petals at least three of your petals and then when you get to your fourth I'll show you how to connect these two flowers together okay I'm got up to my fourth petal and I pulled through all my loops and that's where I'm at right now now you want to get the flower that you want to connect to each flower has three sections this is where you did your chain three and then you, you pull through all of your loops like you did here see there's the chain three up here then you pull through all your loops then you chain three and then you attach it which will give you the chain three when you first chain one like this creates this hole on the top and then when you do your other two and slip stitch like this it then creates this next chamber giving you the three chamber area two of them is a chain three area and then you have that small top one okay now what you want to do when attaching these flowers is you want to get to the point on the flower you're working on where you've just pulled through all your loops then you want to get your flower put your hook into that top circle I mean that top stitch now you have a chain here and a chain here you want to put it through the chain area here to the side so now you have it going in through the top and then out one of the chain sides now you want to complete the connection by pulling through chain three and then slip stitch like you normally would into that same stitch where you did your second part of your buff then you slip stitch into the next and then repeat so you're doing like you would when you get to the very top you pull through all your loops and then you usually just chain to connect you're doing the exact same thing you normally would the only difference is you have your hook through the, the flower another flower and that's it you'll, the next petal is the same thing chain three make the first part of your petal one two three then go to the next stitch one two and three now you've got all your loops pull through all your loops and now again you're to that point where you're ready to connect so you've connected once here now you want to connect to the next petal so you're going to go into that top puff stitch and then out the chain three space slip stitch and chain three then go into that stitch and slip stitch and then slip stitch over and then you will do your last petal and you won't connect it to anything you're only going to have these two for your very first two flowers connected and then when you start making your next flower you'll make it like this one with the white center and the brown petals 
and connect it to these two. You will always have a bottom and a top that is not going to be connected. The side two petals will be connected onto the next. Do that until you have nine flowers connected. And then I'll show you what you do on your tenth flower, how you connect it to form a ring. Okay, once you have your nine complete flowers connected, on your tenth, you want to make your first petal and connect it, and then your second petal and connect it. Then do one free petal, because as you see, the top and the bottom petals are not connected to anything. So you have your one free petal and it's ready to be connected. So fold your, your um, flowers in half like this. And then make your connection on this side with this petal. Oops. Slip stitch the next stitch and then make your next petal two and three and then connect this petal as well chain three and slip stitch to connect and then slip stitch in the next stitch and then make your final petal one two, three, one, two, and three. Pull through all the loops, chain three, slip stitch and slip stitch to the very next one. Then you want to chain one and cut your yarn, already did that, and then just pull it through, just like that. And that's how you make your flowers into a ring of ten. Okay, I already started working on a little bit of my flowers here, but I'm going to show you how once you have a connect, once you have your ring connected here, and you're ready to start act, um, adding flowers, you want to add your very first flower with this flower, same kind of flower that's to the left. So if you want to connect here, then get a white flower to connect it. You're always going to be using the flower that's to the left. For this first row only, I'm using three connections for the very first flower. We're going to be using the top petals, this one and this one, and then the connection in between them to make our first connection. You'll only have three connections. The rest, the ones that will come afterwards, will have four. See, one, two, three, four. But since there's no other flower other than the bottom ones to connect to, the first one and the first one only of the row will have three connections. So just remember that when you're starting your, your row. Now, I'm going to flip it over so that the puff side of the flower is facing me because this is how you make your connections. And I'm going to start, since this one only has three connections for this first connection, I've already done three of my petals and I'm on my fourth and I have five and six left to go so I have a total of three petals left so I'm going to connect just like I did before this petal my fourth petal and I'm going to finish it and start my next petal one, two, three, then one, two, and three. Pull through all my loops. Now, this connection between the two flowers, I always favor the one on the left. You're going to go into that top stitch again and come out the chain. So essentially, you're making another connection through that same stitch. And you chain three. Again, slip stitch and do your next petal as normal. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Now, my last petal, 
I'm going to come in and I'm going to connect it on to my white flower here. See, I've done connection here and in the middle, and then now it just naturally falls to this next white petal. So I'm going to connect it as usual. One, two, three. Then again, slip stitch, slip stitch, chain one, and then cut your yarn. Now, like I said, the rest of them for the row will be four connections. See, one, two, three, and four. So you're going to be using the petal, the top petal of your next flower to the right. This is the back side, by the way. So once you've got your first petal connected, which easily could be this one, you're going to go to the next flower and you're going to attach it to that top stitch the same way you always do. So I just did top to the top. I'm going to make my next petal two and three. Pull through all my loops. Now again, just like we did the first flower, we're going to be making that connection between the two flowers. Same way. One, two, three. And then one, two, three for the first. One, two, and three for the second. Now, in this case, where we would normally, last time we just connected onto the top petal, this time we're going to be connecting, like I said, every time there's a connection, you want to favor the one to the left. So I'm going to do my connection as normal, and I'm going to favor this left petal of the connection. So you chain three and finish your connection as so. So when you lay it flat, you can already see how it's going. One, two, three. And then you make your next petal and you connect it onto this next petal here. And I'm going to do that now. Skip the head. Get my last connection done for you real quick. Then you just slip stitch in the same stitch, slip stitch in the next stitch, chain one and cut your yarn. And see, this is where you started. Then you did the two connection sections, always favoring the one to the left. And then you did your last one on uh, this petal that was open. And you would continue to do this every time. Your next petal, you will connect here then at this connection piece and this connection piece and this petal and you continue that all the way around until your last flower. Okay, when you get to the last flower on round two, we're going to be making our connections using five petals. So one, two, three, four, and five. The only petal you're not going to be using is this top one and this top one. So it's going to be just like all the other ones with just that top one up left. So I'm only going to be making whoops up for I'm gonna make my first petal to here and then I'm gonna do my connection right away. So starting with it with the back facing you I'm gonna go in and make my first connection leaving one petal at the top. Again, I'm working over my tails. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, my second connection. Again, every time you make a connection where there's a connection already, always favor the left one. 
as usual. I'm just going to connect my next two like that, favoring the left one, and then my final connection will be here. Okay, I'm just finishing my last connection. So I started from my very first petal, connected here, 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 and here. As I'm sure you did too, right? Only leaving the top petal to finish. And on the third row, you'll be connecting using the same color that's below it. So say if you're going to make your first connection here to use these three connections, just like you did the very first row, then you're going to be picking the same color flower. So if it's white you're starting, then you'll want to have the white flower, and then you'll connect it here, here, and end here. So that way it'll continue on diagonal. And it's the same here. If you start with a brown flower, you, you make a brown flower, start on a brown flower. So you're going to start to connect here, here, and then finish here. And that's how you'll do your very first flower on the next row. And then, of course, you start connecting using uh, four stitches after that. And that's it. Okay, you want to continue to connect your flowers until you have a total of seven rows. And then we're going to start closing up our hat. I'm choosing white because uh, I'm sure you're the same problem that you've got a little bit of white and a little bit of brown left over or whatever colors that you're using. The darker color usually goes the best around the rim, so I'm going to close the hat up using my white. And what you do, let me get just a little bit closer here, is I don't know if you've ever done the attachment where you, you um, connect the double crochet instead of the slip stitch and then chain it looks better so what I do is I'll wrap my yarn around my hook then go into each flower has an unconnected petal on the top and then they have two connected so go in through one of the connected petals pull up a loop giving you three then you want to yarn over and you want to pull through two and then yarn over and pull through two and that gives you a double crochet here and then when you get to your top petal here, you have two chain three spaces and then your top puff stitch connection here. You're going to want to put a single crochet in the chain three and then the top puff stitch, another single crochet, and then again in this chain three space here, put your last single crochet. And then again, Every time you come to the lower ones here, you want to put a double crochet in that chain three space. So double crochet there and then double crochet here. Then you come to the top petal again, single crochet in that chain three space, single crochet in that top puff stitch, and then single crochet in that chain three space and then just continue that around double crochet here in this chain three space double crochet here in this chain three space and then again you want to do three single crochets one two and then the last one here you just want to continue to repeat this all the way around until you get back up to your beginning stitch. Okay, when you get to the end of your row, this is the first connection that we did, the double crochet. You want to go into that same stitch and do a single crochet. And go into the next stitch and do a single crochet. Then get a marker this is your first stitch here, so I'm going to grab my double crochet here and put a marker there, just so I know this is where I'm beginning my round. So for the next two rows, you want to just do one single crochet in each stitch around. So do two rows of just single crochet, and I will see you back here in a moment. Okay, when you've got done with your two rows of 
co single crochets. So this is the third row. You're going to be starting the fourth row. And what you do for the fourth row is you want to start your decreases. So you want to start doing alternating a single crochet decrease and then a regular single crochet. And then a single crochet decrease and then a regular crochet. So we're going to start this by doing a single crochet decrease to begin with. And then the next stitch, we just do a regular single crochet. And you want to repeat this all the way around for this row. And then I'll see you when you get back up here to the beginning. Okay, I just got done with my row. And you should end before your marker here on a single crochet, not on a decrease. And you should have 34 stitches. For row five, you need, for actually for rows five and six both, do a single crochet in each stitch around. So for rounds one, two, three, four, yep, for rounds five and six, just do single crochets in each stitch around, and I'll see you back here for round seven. Okay, I just got to the end of my round, round six, and I'm ready to start round seven. And we're going to do round seven the exact same way we did before on the other decrease round. We want to do a decrease, a single crochet decreasing, and then do a single crochet. And again, do a single crochet decrease, and then do a single crochet. And you want to continue this for the remainder of the round. Okay, I just got to the end of my round. Again, I went ahead and I ended with a single crochet. I could do a single crochet decrease here and bring me up to here, but I just decided to go ahead and end on my single crochet. And I have 23 stitches. Now for the next two rows for rounds eight and nine, you want to put one single crochet in each stitch around. And I'm going to move my marker up to here just so I know where my first stitch of the round is. So do two rows, rounds eight and nine of single crochets, and then I'll show you how to finish the hat. Okay, when you get to the end of your row, you want to slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, and leaving yourself a long tail, because we're going to sew in your hat now. Cut your yarn. And then we're going to be weaving in, going in through one stitch, and then going into the next, and then going through the next. You're going to be doing a back and forth weaving through the stitches with your needle. You're going to be creating a uh, like a pull, like if you've ever met a purse where you have a, a pulley. This is what you're doing. You're basically making a pulley with your yarn. Going through one, going back to the next, coming up to the next, then going into the next going up to the next, and when you've done it a few times, go ahead and pull your string through and see how it's starting to create this pull effect. And this is how we're going to do for this whole ring to close up our hat. So just continue doing this all the way around. Okay, when you've gotten through all your stitches here, you want to go ahead and feed your tapestry needle through that hole in the center and turn your hat inside out. And now you can pull your hole closed all the way. And now start working from one side of the hole to the other side of the hole. Trying to stay as close to the hole as you can so that you don't sew too deeply, causing you know a large indention right around here. 
so you want to stay you know as close to the top as you can going through one of the stitches on this side and one of the stitches on the other side pull it through to have a hook I'm going to hook a loop like this and then feed your tail through the loop and this will create a slip knot. I'm going to do this a few more times. I usually prefer to do this at least three times just to make sure I got it. Then right from here you can feed your tail down through the stitches and then tug just to make sure that your stitching isn't going to be too tight here. I'm just going to feed it a little bit this way as well and pull it because you can guarantee when someone wears it they're going to pull it. You don't want that tail to come out. You can get your scissors and cut. And that's going to finish the and turn your hat inside out again. And that's how you finish the back part of the hat. Now let's make our rim. We want to start by using our darker color. So grab your darker color and your hook again and let's get started. Okay we're going to start off the same with the rim, the yarn over, and go into one of my chain three spaces here on the lower side. Remember, we're doing single crochets up here. And you want to do yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And then again, just like we did before, single crochet in the chain three space, then in that top puff stitch, and then in the chain three space and then double crochet again in these lower petals. We're doing exactly what we did before. We're just this is how you flatten it out to make an even surface. So you just want to continue all the way around with your double crochets in your lower petals and your three your three single crochets on your top petal. When you get up to the beginning stitch again, you want to single crochet to that first stitch, single crochet into the next stitch just like you did before, and then place your marker here. And then you want to do five rounds of just single crochet. So you have your marker here and you want to do five rounds of just single crochet and then I'll see you back here when you get to the end of your fifth round. Okay, when you get to the end of your row you want to skip one stitch and then and then slip stitch to the next. It'll give you more of a flatter surface there. And then chain one, cut your yarn giving yourself a bit of tail to be worked in then I'm going to be working in all my stitches here hide my tail and that's it that has been the tutorial to show you how to make this flower slouch hat I hope that you like this tutorial and if you make one of these hats I would love to see it in many colors so please share it on my Google community or my Facebook page and if you like this video please like and share this video and please don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching